Well, good evening, everybody. So, as the days start to get shorter, and the temperatures start to drop more and more, we have to change gears here at my place. So we prep for winter, and it's time to fire up our wood boiler. We use our wood boiler for heating the house during the winter time, as well as using it for our domestic hot water. And I put the boiler in, I don't know, eight, maybe nine years ago. And if you're not familiar with how an outdoor wood boiler works, it's basically got a fire box where you throw the wood in and it's surrounded by a water jacket. That water gets warmed up and it gets pumped into your home and it runs through, in my case, a heat exchanger in my forest air furnace and then also a heat exchanger just before my water heater. So there's a damper door on the front of the stove. When the water temperature drops below 160 degrees, the damper door opens. And when it gets up above 180 degrees, the damper door closes and it just keeps cycling and circulating. And when I installed the boiler years ago, I got this tiny little thermostat that has two temperature probes on it. And unfortunately it was after the fact, so I had to wire those probes to just as the pipes come into the house, as opposed to getting it actually out to the stove. So my temperature values have been off, but at least there's something in the house that lets me look at what's the temperature of the boiler at. Because it's not one of these new fancy ones that's got Wi-Fi on it that sends you an email when your temperature starts getting too low and you're running out of wood. This is just a, you know, plain Jane outdoor wood boiler. The conventional style. And so I, I've had this little thermostat that tells me, you know, what the temperature coming into the house is and what the temperature going out back to the boiler is. And it, it, it works. I mean, when you walk down the hallway, you can glance at it and see what the temperature is. But I was down here in the utility room one day working on, I don't even remember what I was working on at the time, just something regarding one of the different solar systems. And I had this, like, Duh moment. <laughs> that's, that's the best way I can describe it. I've got a Victron system that allows for a lot of customization. And my Victron system came with a lot of these. They're temperature sensors. So I want to try and take one of these temperature sensors, hook it into the servo, and see if I can strap it to one of the pipes here in the basement because the the water lines actually run right up above my head it's actually pretty warm right now because they're not insulated water lines <laughs> but they're running right over my head so they're not that far from my my servo and so i want to see can i take one of these put it on one of the pipes and then have remote visibility as well as logging which i don't have at all for the water temperature on my boiler so let's find out together. So my servo is right down there. We've got my inverters, trunk, and then there's my water lines for my boiler. So I think that one is the supply line, and that one is the return line. Now, the one downside is I'm kind of in the middle between the furnace and the water heater. So the furnace is down there, and if I turn around, the water heater's back behind the curtain over here. So it's not gonna give me an exact temperature if the furnace is going, because Obviously, heat's going to be taken out then. But it still gives me a good idea of what's going on without me having to walk past that temperature gauge in the hallway. So these, these temperature sensors are very basic. They're, they're designed to, to go on a battery terminal. But it's just a simple two-wire connection. 
And on the bottom of the servo, there is a slot for four temperature sensors. In fact, I actually am using just one as kind of like an open air sensor for the utility room to just get an idea of what the temperature is in the utility room. So I pulled out the temperature block on the bottom of the Victron and I plugged in the two terminals right here. Hopefully you can actually see that. It's a very tight space to actually get a camera in. And I actually had to use a screwdriver and push the orange plug in with the screwdriver so that I could seat these ferrules inside this terminal. And this is just gonna plug right into the temperature section on the bottom of the servo. There's actually a spot for three different terminal blocks. My tank sensors, temperature sensors, and then digital inputs. So we've got our temperature line right here. And for right now, I just have it running up the wall next to my Bluetooth sensor. And I brought it over the trunk and I taped it to this water line. Again, I'm not expecting 100% accuracy, but it's gonna give me an idea of where the boiler is at. So it's taped to that water line. I might put a piece of insulation or something over it. So from the temperature sensor aspect, it's really that simple. I mean, it's two wires. You're probably gonna end up spending more time trying to get those tiny little wires into that terminal block than you will setting up the entire thing. <laughs> so if I open up the remote console, again, this is the new uh, GUI update for Victron. So I can show you that utility room sensor that I've been using for a while. You can see it's 70 degrees in here right now. And that's just open air. And so if I wanted to go and add another temperature sensor, we'd come over to settings and we would scroll down to IO. And the temperature sensors are analog. Here's where you would enable any of those four temperature sensors if you plug into the bottom of that terminal block. So we're gonna enable temperature sensor two, go back, and if we go to levels now, we can see now we have a generic temperature input and it's reading 118 degrees. Well, I wanna change the name and I don't think it's 118 degrees. It's probably a lot higher than that. So we're gonna go into settings under device list, and we've got our generic temperature sensor at the top. It tells us our temperature. We can actually come into the device and then name it. So I'm gonna name it boiler. Go back. And I'm gonna come into setup. So we're gonna change the type, because it's not a battery. I guess water heater might be the closest. I don't know. We'll go with that right now. And because I know that the temperature is a lot hotter than what that sensor is reading, there's gonna be an offset to allow us to increase or decrease the value that that temperature sensor is reading. And so playing around, I think I found out that mine is uh, gonna be 18. So if I add 18, and again, for if you're gonna do this, You'll want to take another thermostat and, you know, basically use that to calibrate this sensor. But I found out that mine's going to be 18, so we'll hit set. And we can see right here that it took it to 149 degrees. So now if I come to levels, now it gives us our proper name and it gives us 149 degrees, which means that my boiler is a little bit low right now. <laughs> I think somebody was doing dishes though, so that's probably why the temperature is low. So now as we come outside over to the boiler in the dark, yes, I know it's probably hard to see. If I open up the door, it's smoky. But right now, it says 154 on the boiler. And if I look at the VRM and scroll down, now we can see, and hopefully you can read this, it says 152.6 on the VRM. 
and we're at 154 on the boiler. So we are pretty close to temp. The other nice thing is if I come to the advanced section, scroll all the way down, I added the widget. Now we can see the temperature being logged in the VRM. So I could actually even set alerts based on this temperature if I wanted to, which would actually be kind of sweet. And I even have little widgets on my phone, which I can scroll down to and see boiler, 150.8 degrees right now. And that was refreshed 50 seconds ago. Well, that's pretty fun now because I kind of have like a smart feature for my conventional boiler. <laughs> so I just got the stove restocked. It sounds like Ian's in the shower right now using the water. The furnace is going. So the temperature has dropped down to 147. But again, my temperature sensor is kind of in between the water heater over here and the furnace over here. So it's when both of those things are running, it's not going to get an accurate representation of what the boiler is. I can always look at getting another sensor and, you know, running it all the way over to where it comes into the house. And honestly, I could get one that goes on the inlet and the outlet so that I could see that temperature difference in the VRM. And I might do that, but for the time being, when you've got all this Victron stuff that comes with these extra temperature sensors and you're not using them, why not use them? Even if it's to get a room temperature or, you know, like in my case, a water line temperature. So <laughs> it's just kind of nice. I mean, it's a small thing, but now I don't have to wonder when I'm away from home, shoot, what's the boiler temperature at? Is it too low? So just, just be nice being able to monitor that or not have to go all the way out to it when it's, you know, 20 degrees outside to see what the water temperature is. Yes, I can walk downstairs, reach up, grab the pipe and go, huh, oh, yeah, that's warm. Okay. But now I don't have to. So with it being Thanksgiving next week, I did want to share with you guys, there are some Black Friday deals that I have seen. I wonder if you can hear that, the dogs walking across. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Current Connected is going to be wrapping up their free shipping promotion at the end of this month. So anything over $2,000, they're offering free shipping on that goes through till the end of the month. They also have this new discount. I guess you could call it like a discount program almost that's been going on for the last maybe month or so where if you create an account on their website and log into that account, then you get a discount on most of their products. And they just added within the last couple of days the ability to look at the product listing and see what the price was before the discount. And now you can see what the discount price is. Maybe a couple percent savings, but hey, everything helps, right? And that's not a Black Friday thing. That's just, uh, hey, thanks for being a customer thing. And then I got an email from Santan Solar. They are doing 5% off I have to look and see what the dates are on it. I don't exactly remember. It might be through Black Friday plus $350 flat rate shipping. So I'll leave links to all those down in the description below so you can take a look at it for yourself. But Thanksgiving and, and even into Christmas time is when you can start getting a lot of these deals and discounts. And so I wanted to share those ones with you guys. So if you've been saving up for a time where you could find a good, decent discount. Well, now might be that time. You know, as we come into this Thanksgiving time, uh, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. And, you know, I'm thankful for you guys. Uh, you're, you're taking time to, to watch these videos that I'm putting out, whether they be good or bad. 
we have fun with it, right? And, you know, I appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, liking, subscribing, sharing, um, even becoming channel members. It's something, again, that I never thought that I'd be doing. And, and, I, and I do appreciate you guys. So have a happy Thanksgiving. And with that, I'm going to let you all go. You all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later. Thank you.